Welcome to the Infuse Your Future podcast, where we bring together people and ideas who are making the world a better place. I'm your host, Dr. C. In this podcast, you're going to hear solo episodes with various self-help topics. You're also going to hear guest speakers from all walks of life. If you're ready to experience the power of coaching, set up a complimentary 45-minute consultation with me at infuseyourfuture.com. And be sure to sign up for my mailing list for a free gift. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody, I'd like to welcome Donna Wallace, who's going to talk to us about energy healing and switching on your light. So hi, Donna. Hi, Carla. <laughs> How are you? Great today? to have you on the show. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do in the world? Um, I am a regular, you know, mid forties woman living just outside of Melbourne, Australia. I live by the beach here. I've got two children. I'm married with a husband. I've had my business um, for about eight years now um and that really came to fruition after my daughter was born and it just felt like this I'd always had energy healing as a pipe dream as something that I wanted to do for my work and I'd done it as a side hustle for many 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 years Carla <laughs> so I've been doing energy healing work for over 25 years now um and I started when I was a teenager and yeah, when she was born, it just felt like I was meant to be role modeling to both of my kids that you can live a life that is your passion and your dreams and you can be everything that you want to be and create what you want to create in the world. I don't, I didn't just want my kids to hear me say that to them. I wanted them to see it. I wanted to role model that and I had this emptiness inside of me, a sense of being unfulfilled. Like I know that I'm meant to be doing something else other than what I'm doing. And when my daughter was born, it just felt like if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. I'm going to give it a go. It could fail. It could flop miserably. I don't know what's going to happen. I kept my um, corporate job. I stayed in my corporate job for a bit while I built up my business. So I had a safety net and um, that was good, although challenging to fit everything in, um, especially with a young daughter who was not sleeping very well, Carla. <laughs> I remember um, those days. But- Yes, me too. Um, so, but having said that, it was it was a time in my life where I felt like for the first time deeply content and fulfilled. I love that. You said you've been doing this energy healing for 25 years. What made you get into it? What was the inspiration? Um, I had no idea about energy work or intuition or anything like that in terms of the family that I grew up in my parents weren't into any of that (laughs) Um, and I didn't have anyone else around me that was but as it happened we um, had a who was to become a close family friend step in and give me Reiki one day when I was quite upset as a teenager and when she put her hands on my shoulders and I felt that that energy, the warmth come through and a sense of me calming down straight away. It was like my first time I felt like I was at home in my body on this planet. And and there was something about what happened then that was like, I don't know that I have words to it at that time, Carla, but it was something that I knew that I had to explore more. Almost like a a calming or an inspiration. It was. It was also, you know, a sliding doors moment. My life could have gone one way or another. That was one of those turning point moments. I've got to experience Reiki in person. Um, I've had one Reiki session online, which was phenomenal by a good friend of mine. But um, I haven't had it done in person. So I'm kind of looking forward to that experience. Yes, you need to definitely do it. There's nothing like the feeling of the warmth coming through people's hands. And sometimes you experience all sorts of different things, but I believe Reiki is really one of those foundation modalities that opens up the doors to other things, um, other energy healing. So for me, 
definitely was a foundation and for many other people that I know in this realm, it is too. So, yeah. Yes, you yeah. should try it in person. I think you'll like it. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know one of the things that um, that you do is you help people switch on their light. Can you yes. explain what that means? It sounds phenomenal, amazing. We all want our light switched on. So what <laughs> does that we? mean and how do you help people do it? I realized somewhere along the way that that is my mission for my life in terms of that soul path, that soul calling and the realm of my work, my vocation. And it was only after doing it for probably a number of years that I realized that I had a vision that I was like out in the stars and looking down on the planet Carla and I saw lights switching on, like, like lights turning on in cities and I saw like multiple lights, like, you know, when popcorn pops, like popcorn kernels, proper popcorn kernels right, pop, right. Um, they, you know, ignite other popcorn kernels around them. And that's what I saw with lights. I saw people's lights switching on in different cities and I saw lights switching on all around the world. And then I realized, oh my gosh, that is the light of people's souls. That is people's light switching on. And so what I believe is true is that we all have this radiant, vibrant light in us that is the light of our souls. And most of us are walking around with stuff that kind of just gets in the way of that light. You know, we're already there. We already have everything inside of us. I just help people clear the junk in the way of their light shining. And so there is our souls have this potential that is so often untapped and we know who we are on that deeper level. We have a sense of it, even when we can be a bit disconnected from it. We know that we're light beings. We know that we have energy fields. We know that we have auras. Some people take photos of them. Some people see them. We all feel them. We all feel like, oh, I'm not sure about that other person's energy if we meet someone that, you know, we're not is is not a good fit for us. Or we have that feeling when we walk into a room like, I've never met this person before, but they feel familiar. There's something about them that I like. I can't I don't know what that is yet, but uh, there's something about them that I like. It is our energy fields interacting. So <clears throat> what is the process of you helping people? switch their lights on predominantly I do energy and emotional healing work mm -hmm. and then also my jewelry business so when I I have when I have people come to me I say you can choose your own adventure with me do you did you have those choose your own adventure books oh I did um yeah where you get to like a particular part in the book and then you can choose option a b or c and mm -hmm. then that'll take you whatever path you want I have a choose your own adventure into business <laughs> where people can choose their own adventure one option is custom made jewelry for your soul that activates your light switches on your light in that way or um i have yeah my energy and emotional healing work which does the same but in a different way and some people choose to do both of course but um with energy and emotional healing i as i said to you i, I start to clear the stuff that's in the way for people I believe that our emotions are our gateway to our soul. And so when people are in a place where they're overwhelmed by their emotions or disconnected from them, it makes it really hard to be in tune with who you really are on that soulful level. But when we can come into a place where our emotions are more regulated, we know how to flow with them when they come in, they don't destroy our lives, they're not like our Achilles heel anymore, um, they can become they can become a, a like almost like our best friend in terms of the way that we experience the world can be so enhanced through our emotions. So I have a lot of like sensitive, empathic, emotional people that come to me and I teach them how that part of them is their gift, is their strength. And I just teach them how to navigate. You know, sometimes we heal things from the past and we navigate all sorts of different things, um, you know, releasing trauma and there's really so many different reasons why people come to me, but um, there is often a common thread like 
I feel like there's more to life, Donna, than what I'm experiencing right now. Maybe they have a really great life. Like it's a beautiful life looking in from the outside. They've got a beautiful, perfect life. And, but on the inside, they feel like, I'm not sure, like there feels like there's something missing. You know how I said before, like a level of contentment that was missing for me when I wasn't doing my soul work, or it might be that they want to improve particular areas of their life. They want to get rid of some of those funky relationship dynamics or patterns that keep happening, or they know that they just don't feel very good inside of themselves, that self-esteem piece, or they want to tune into their intuition and they don't know how to do that. So what happens is when I do this energy and emotional healing work with people, they get to a point where like, bing, something happens, their intuition switches on, but also their light switches on. And it naturally happens as a consequence of doing that energy and emotional healing work. As I said, we're clearing so the clutter in the way of that deeper inner connection with yourself and your soul. And naturally your light switches on as we do that. Now, have you found with all of the technological advances that are coming on that you get busier and busier every year? (laughs) Because I feel (laughs) like as, as our world advances more technologically, more stuff gets in to clutter the, the inner soul and more stuff gets in to sort of take over our schedules and clutter our schedules. Um, But I don't know if you've noticed that. I mean, I live in the San Francisco Bay area, so it's the epicenter of tech. And it's just, you really are super overwhelming. (laughs) But I don't know, maybe in Australia they have a much cooler lifestyle. I think it depends on where you are and who you are. Yes, like I live by the beach, have a very, um, even though I have a full life, like I've got pretty calm, grounded life. Um, That is, I think, really very much an individual experience. Um, And But it may be the case for you in terms of, you know, where you live as well. I haven't noticed my, I haven't noticed that correlation but I have noticed that one of the other forms of addiction that comes in is, you know, social media, being addicted to devices and things like that. So I've always had um, clients with different varying experiences with addictions and that can be something that comes in. What I feel that is happening with that is actually when we are, when we've got really big feelings, when we've got really big things going on inside of us, Carla, we tend to go up into our heads. We tend to disconnect from that feeling state because it's quite, it can be overwhelming. It can feel like there's a lot going on. So if you've experienced a lot of grief or anger or like just really intense big feelings, we tend to go up in our heads and distract ourselves it's that distraction point that we will like put pour our energy into tech or we'll pour our energy into like things that we know are not great for us. And so it's all getting rid of all of that sort of distraction and supporting people with how to have that capacity so they can really deep dive into themselves and how to do it. Like the how part. It sounds great. Now, what is the average length of time that someone works with you? Like, say they go and they sign up for one of your healing sessions. Um, Have you had anybody heal it in one session? Like, what is the (laughs) shortest and longest you've worked with someone? Um, I have done one-off sessions in the past. I don't do them anymore. Um, And the reason for that is because I like to see significant, long-lasting change. And that happens over time. And so... Um, I have, yeah, I've done one-off sessions and they're amazing for what they are. And yet what I love is spending time with people and doing like layering the different work with them. So it turns into this beautiful cumulative effect over time. Um, My clients typically work with me for around six to nine months. Um, I have got someone, I've got a couple of clients who've been working with me for five years and are continuing. So it's an ongoing support mechanism and ability for them to really have that kind of soul led life that they want. Um, yeah, everyone's different though. And so even though I have pro a program, um, which is called soul radiance, I have, um, 
it's very personalized to what each person needs. So it's very much dependent upon what they want to get out of it. Yeah. 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 You mentioned radiance. I know that's one of the things that you like to talk about and that your work really helps bring out the radiance in someone. Did you want to yeah. talk a little bit more about that and the importance of it and why someone it should is. tap into it? I think we all want that, right? We all want to feel radiant and we all want to feel like, is that a, um, you know, a a vanity thing? Maybe, but there's something much deeper than that. We all want to feel like we're glowing from the inside out. We all want to feel like we're the best, shiniest versions of ourselves, yes? And so to me, radiance is not, it's not a measure of physical beauty, but your physical appearance can change through that radiance. We've all seen people when they're in their happy place and that you're like, what's going on with you? You look amazing. Yes. (laughs) There's a glow that people have. Um, But radiance to me is actually tapping into your unique essence, Carla. And that is what makes people so beautiful is the uniqueness of you. And when we look at who you are as an individual being and that that path, that process of individuation, which is, you know, what, um, which is really how do we become who we truly are and how do we become those unique beings? How do we uniquely express ourselves from our heart? How do we become that individual that is not a carbon copy of everyone else in our same industry? You know, how do I become an energy healer that's not the same as the millions of other energy healers out there? Um, How is my work different? How am I different? How am I unique and different as a person? And how do my gifts want to express through me? So I think that radiance is this beautiful you know, world to explore, which taps us into who you really are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned intuition. I think intuition is so important. And I feel like a lot of us are losing our intuition in our fast paced society. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about intuition and the importance of it and how you help people tap into their own? Yeah, absolutely. So I think you're right. I think that our fast paced society and the way that we are educated and the way that we're trained to work, to to study and then work is very intellectual. And it uses, it takes us out of the feeling state that we naturally are in, emotional and intuitive, and it moves us into our headspace. Now, is it wrong? No, it's not because there are so many of us who are intellectual beings and are meant to be operating in that state. But when you add in the felt sense in your body, when you add in intuition, it turns into absolute magic where you can use your intellect and your intuition. It is a phenomenal secret source recipe, Carla, of being able to bring on board all the different parts of you. Now, intuition is like, is the it's for me it's one of the cornerstones of how to live a truly content and fulfilled life because our intuition is always guiding us to where we need to be or to do the things or to be in relationship or to have the job whatever it is that supports us on a much deeper level intuition is like intuition is like the the signs and the the signposts that help us get to who we are, who we truly are and where we need to be. It's like if we can follow our intuition, there is something that happens inside of us. Now, what I'm talking about is a whole life change for most people. It is instead of making decisions of trying to figure out what's the right decision, do I do this or do I do that? And what's the pros of this and what's the cons of, you know, pros and cons lists and trying to figure out what the best approach is. Intuition is a very different approach where if you can feel what is what gives you light, what gives you life, what makes your body feel relaxed, then it is just a whole nother ball game because you can make a you can make life choices 
based on what they're going to feel like in the future. Let me explain what I mean. That sounds a bit out there, doesn't it, Carla? <laughs> I mean, um, not to me, but maybe to some people. Not to you. Yeah, maybe to some people. So if you are considering um, what trying to make a decision about something, what you can do is feel into your body and feel what saying yes to that path feels like and then get that feeling and that experience. So say you, the yes option feels really expansive, it makes your body feel relaxed and it brings a smile to your face and say the no option makes it makes you feel like your head is hanging down in front of you, like you're going to have to like try, you know, walk through the trenches and it feels like a lot of hard work, then you know intuitively which path to go down and what the what the feeling state of that is actually going to be for you in your life. So you're going to take the expansive, joyful, lightness path or are you going to take the heavy work, I've got my head hanging down experience. And it's it's that ability to be able to make the best decisions for you that really pan out in dividends. And so when you take that yes path, like the most amazing things happen that you could never have expected. And that's what I love about intuition is that you can make choices. You can take your life in particular ways. And yes, it's unknown. Um, but to be honest, both paths are unknown. We just try and control the future by controlling, you know, decisions or thinking that we can control things. We really can't. Um, but there is like the most magical, unexpected things that happen for us when we follow our path of intuition. Our soul takes us to the most magical places. That sounds amazing. Now, do you have any advice for people who are trying to follow their intuition, but they have certain responsibilities? Maybe they have children, maybe they have an older parent that they're taking care of or a special needs child or whatever it may be they have, or maybe they have, you know, they're in debt or they have bills to pay and they know intuitively that they need to go down path A, <clears throat> but because of their financial responsibilities, they feel like they need to stay on path B. So yeah. do you have any advice for those people? Yeah, I would say like if you're getting that you're meant to take a path, but you feel like you're held to another path because of financial responsibilities or any other situation in your life. If I was in that situation and I have been in that situation, this is what I say. <laughs> I talk to the universe and I'm like, so listen here, if you want me to go down path A, you know I've got this real life situation that I need to be responsible for, that I need to take care of. Show me how you want me to do it. Like help me sort out this particular situation first or show me a way in which I can have both because we can't blow up our lives, Carla, and be irresponsible at the same time. We need to live in the 3D realms. We need to sort out our money. We need to sort out, you know, I'm a mother. I need to be my, my, my primary values, my family. Like, you know, I always want to be here for my kids first so they get to take priority. And yet I actually think this is a conversation of not all, it's an end conversation. How do I have that, that, you know, path A and still be the mum that I want to be or, you know, resolve the debt that I know will actually make me feel so much more relaxed and better in my body? Like how do we have those conversations of, you know, there's something to unpack and something to un explore when We've got things that feel like a push pull, like one part of us wants to is holding us back and another part of us wants to move forward. Um, I think that there is actually something else that wants to come forth for you. And if the thing that is holding you back is something like some sometimes the thing that is holding us back, Carla, can be the stuff that needs to be healed as well. It can be a pattern that we've, you know, a repeating pattern that we're, you know, like we might be like creating more and more debt for ourselves and we know it's not the right thing to do, but we can't quite figure out how to stop doing that. And there is an issue with that. You feel like you're out of integrity when you're doing that. There's something that's misaligned with your values. And even though you've been going down that path, you know, it's not the right thing for you. You know, you need to resolve it. 
sometimes when we do healing work on patterns like that, it then basically you can get into repair and restore mode. You can write the correction, right? Um, like correct that sort of pattern inside of you, find a new way of being, repair the the damage that you've done, if that's called debt, um, as an example. And then there might be space for you to, in the future to pursue that path A. And so sometimes when we feel like there's a push-pull dynamic like that, there's actually healing work that can be done so we can set ourselves free to pursue what our soul truly desires for us in the future. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I love how it all kind of fit together and that you brought in the healing aspect, because I feel like that is true. A lot of times we have a lot of unprocessed trauma and that's getting in our way, causing us to self-sabotage or Definitely. second guess ourselves and to just be able to yes. acknowledge that or understand that you have a problem and seek out a healer. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the sort of stuff that I'm talking about that gets in the way of your intuition. It's, to, you know, it's the chicken and the egg. But, you know, like it's when we start to resolve some of that unprocessed trauma and the impact of that on how we feel about ourselves, our self-esteem, the way that we do or don't second-guess ourselves, Carla, yeah, um, when we start to resolve all of that, it opens up a pathway in front of us. It, clear, it basically, like, it sort of is like removing obstacles that are sitting in front of us. We remove that with the healing that we do. It's like the the things that we've experienced in the past that are still sitting with us, that are still having a, a toll, taking a toll on us, sit like boulders or obstacles in our future. It We just can't sort of get to the place that we want to get to. We're still consumed by the past. When we do that healing work, it's like clearing the slate in front of us this sounds very fairy tale like, but this is what I actually see and experiencing um, for myself, but also in, with my clients in sessions is that the future then starts to feel like the sun is shining. It's a warm path. They feel like skipping or running down the path. There's like green meadows with flowers and stuff. Like there is this opening that happens into the future that makes them feel really, they feel really strong and light and supported and energetic and happy to move forward and create the things that they want in their life. And that's what happens as we clear the past. We're also opening up our future. Yeah. And then I would imagine that that helps uh, create fulfillment and contentment, which is another thing that I, I know you said you might want to talk about. Yeah. Um, it absolutely does. Like, I think that the biggest challenge that we all have is ourselves. You know, if we can kind of get out of our own way then we can follow our intuition that enables us to have this deepening of feeling so content in our lives I think that that is missing for a lot of people out there Carla um certainly yeah, 100%, a lot people, especially in the states yeah, yeah it's in this it, I think it's everywhere I really do mm. I think that you know we're sold the dream you know in I don't know that the Australia the great Australian dream is to have own your own house with a picket a white picket fence and the two and a half kids and a dog you know that is the Australian dream that actually I think is changing for a lot of people but um we're sold this dream that you're meant to get married and have children and have a great job and and we can get to a point in our lives where I like actually like yes it all looks really good from the outside but on the inside I feel like am I meant to be doing something else like is there something else out there for me or this feeling like something is missing what is it what is that pathway you know to find that level of contentment and deep fulfillment where you're like I'm living the life I'm meant to be living like you know my my feeling of that is color that whatever my soul has agreed to for me to to do in this lifetime like my soul mission is getting fulfilled and it feels so amazing and it also means like I don't have to come back and do this same thing again <laughs> you know <laughs> um so 
and it, it kind of has this feeling of like there's something bright there's something right in myself there's something right about my life there's something right in the world when I'm I've got that deep level of contentment it feels so amazing and that is different the how for that for how to get that is very different for each person and I think the beautiful thing about fulfillment and contentment is that theoretically you can achieve it same day. You don't have to wait five, 10, 50 years to achieve right. it, you know, when you're doing it right. Now, one question I have about that is right. I'm around a lot of high achievers all the time. And I feel like sometimes yeah. the high achievers, they're like, well, if I feel content, then that means I'm going to stop growing. I'm going to stop yeah. having ideas you know, I'm yeah. just going to like lay around on the beach all day and do nothing in the world. So what do you have to say about those people that think that being content or fulfilled means you pretty much stop your life and that you don't progress? Oh, I love that question, Carla. That's such a great question. So many of us think that our motivation comes from striving, like some part of us that needs to be an overachiever to validate ourselves or there is something going on when we're living from that place like when we are trying to be an overachiever all the time there can be it, this is a again an individual question really which is what is driving you but if we get to a place where we're content and fulfilled actually there can still be a lot of motivation I still have a lot of you know I would say that I've been in that place for a number of years now, but I still like, I still got get up and go. It was a part of me that wants to contribute to the world that wants to, you know, make a difference to people. It sounds cliche, but it's not. I have a different experience of what motivates and drives me now. I don't, I'm not driven by, the people please are looking for seeking for looking for love in all the wrong places, wanting to be validated, wanting to be accepted, wanting to belong, all of the different things that might be underlying dynamics in being an overachiever. Um, there something else can be present there. Like I was having this conversation in a client session yesterday, actually, Carla and the her perfectionist came through and instead of us like trying to release that part because we can't actually release a, that those parts of ourselves we actually need to bring them on board but let's you know let's give that so we did a whole lot of healing around why that perfectionist part of her came through and needed to help her get through you know these former years of her life and then I said to her, what about if your perfectionist has another job to play? Like what if we can bring her on board so she really helps you? So this is someone who is a healer and a musician and creating her own healing modality with music. She, it, she's phenomenal. And I said, I gave her a real life example from me, which is, I have a perfectionist part of me too. But when I'm in my healing work and I, I can feel like, okay, we've resolved, you know, we're working on something in particular with a, I'm working on something in particular with a client and we get to a certain place. I'm like, okay, that feels really good. But my perfectionist is like, it does feel good. And what about this bit that we haven't tapped into yet? And so I'm like, yes, I can feel that we could go take that to the next level. And so I'm thinking this in the background in the session with my client, I can feel that there's something else available. And so, and then we move into that space and it's like, ah, okay, great. Now, like now we've hit it. Now we hit that spot. Now we hit that absolute magic. And you can use your perfectionist part of yourself in different ways. You know, you can use it to, um, to click to hop into untapped potential that you know is is the 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 really good experience really good yes it is but what if we can take it into that next level and so now my perfectionist she's a part of my team I love her and 
she if it doesn't, you know, I've given her all the validation. I've done all that healing work with her. So now she's just on board as part of like, you know, my board of directors. We're sitting around a, a, a round table and she gets to have a seat at the table. And so this is one example of how you can start to use the underlying motivators that may or may not be very healthy for you how you can reintegrate them into yourself and let them have a seat at the table so yeah but it's it's such a great question color I could as you can tell I could talk about this for a long time <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know integrating these parts of ourselves doesn't mean you're going to give up and you know um, like stop doing the things that you're doing it means that you can still pursue with passion but like a purity and you don't need to get anything out of doing the work you just do it for the hell of it because it feels amazing and you know that this is your soul path this is what you're here to do and that's what you just you know there's an inherent motivation that comes through that's really pure pure of heart yeah that sounds beautiful yeah um yeah i I completely understand the whole parts concept that you were talking about. Um, I learned about it, <clears throat> excuse me. I learned about it taking a trauma recovery course and they were, you know, there's a great book called no bad parts. And, you know, they were talking oh. about integrate because we're all not just one person. I mean, we all, all have these little sub personalities that help us function as a whole person, the prote- protectionist, the perfectionist, the protector, <clears throat> you know, we have the the different emotions driving us, the fear. So, you know, yeah. banishing them, banishing any one of them just makes them want to speak louder. So if we, like you said, just make it an executive board and let everybody have a say at the table and then come to a consensus then uh, yeah, it, it just makes for a lot more content and fulfilling life. Yes, exactly. And also like, you know, there's that saying, what you resist persists. And it, as you say, like it makes those parts of ourselves worse when we're trying to get rid of them. When we bring and integrate all of those parts within us and we accepting ourselves wholly and fully, guess what happens? It switches on our light. Your energy literally is like, bing, it turns on. And we have these moments of light switching on when we're integrating parts of ourselves, when we're listening to our intuition, when we're tapping into that deep contentment and fulfillment, you know, our light is progressively getting brighter and brighter. Just like mother earth is always wanting to grow. You know, that's Life force energy is growth and is evolution. We're exactly the same. We might be getting older, but we're meant to be evolving and growing. Our light is meant to be getting bigger and brighter every day. So so beautifully put. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a fun way to live, Carla. Like at the end of the day, like that's just a fun way to live. It can be challenging and uncomfortable. Oh my gosh, it can be uncomfortable, but it's much more fun. Now, why do you say uncomfortable? What are the uncomfortable parts about it? Because following your intuition can be really uncomfortable. Like, have you ever got something, that, you know, a message like, you know, my intuition said move from the western suburbs of Melbourne to the beach. Do you know how uncomfortable that was? Like, that was so uncomfortable. I was scared. I It felt like a huge decision to uproot my family, take my son out of school, leave our family and friends behind and move to the beach. Do you know how uncomfortable that was? It was excruciatingly uncomfortable. It took so much courage to follow my intuition. Um, our intuition will sometimes lead us to places that it it does take courage to follow your intuition and when we can do it over and over again and it doesn't have to be a big you know a sea change move like I did but if we can follow our intuition over and over again it starts to build that intuition muscle so we can trust it we can follow it a few times see how well it worked out for us and then be like okay well that kind of worked pretty well so maybe I'll just keep doing this and it's you know, it's a really great space to move into as you as you build that muscle. But yeah, following your un- your intuition is 
often super uncomfortable. It takes you out of your comfort zone. And it might bring up all your stuff too. So true. But as you said, it's yeah. also fun. Do you want to elaborate on the fun parts of it? Well, it's fun because you don't have to second guess yourself anymore. You know, like trying to make a decision, pros and cons, and like, do I do this? Do I do that? And you get stuck in your head and you don't know. It's fun because you have a deeper sense of confidence like you can know that things will work out when you follow your intuition but also it's fun because it takes you to some really unexpected experiences you know my intuition took me to starting up a jewelry business like that was never going to happen that I would never have had that idea that was an intuitive download visions that came one after the other like that was not a head thing I'd never entertained an idea of starting a jewelry business nor even having any products but I can't tell you how much fun I'm having in that business with my beautiful customers like we are having so much fun creating beautiful things that activate their soul energy that change their life like that you know or like moving to the beach like I found this beach that's got dolphins here like I didn't even know that like how did that even happen Carla I didn't didn't even know that there were all these and also the most beautiful community that I tapped into who were just gorgeous like they're my people you know now I've got communities of people all over the place but like it's fun because it's unexpected and it's that's why it feels magical when you follow your intuition because things happen like you start jewelry businesses that change people's lives and you find dolphins at beaches and you find your tribe like you know who knows where our intuition takes us that is so true yeah. and for me honestly it was starting this podcast and and you know starting to get into the coaching business it was very scary mm-hmm. because you know, in my normal life, I'm a doctor, a podiatrist. And to think of, uh, you know, you imagine all this judgment and confusion about people, why are you doing this? And I'm like, because this feels amazing. And I get, you know, especially with the podcast, I get to meet people like where else would I meet Donna Wallace, who's down in Australia, I'm here in California. And because I have a podcast, I I get to meet and talk to her. And now I'm going to be thinking about those dolphins all day long. (laughs) you know my favorite sea mammal they're my favorite too they're just phenomenal and uh, the ones here are quite friendly and so sometimes they'll come in and say hello but um that's right Carla like you you know are you are you in an area of Australia where you can swim in the ocean with the dolphins or do you have to worry about the box jellyfish oh we no so some of the jellyfish are like further up north because we're down south. We do have jellyfish here, but we can absolutely swim in the ocean and we can swim all year round. Um, we have all sorts of creatures in our oceans, <laughs> um, <laughs> as as is everywhere. But no, we, we can swim here and it's wonderful, which is great because my dog, she loves to swim behind me. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I've got a little swimming puppy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the jewelry because I know that that's another business that you have. And so I'm curious, does that integrate? I mean, I don't know a lot about Reiki, but I went to an amazing retreat earlier this year and got to go into this, what I thought was a crystal store. I mean, it was a crystal store, but yeah. um, it was run by a woman who does Reiki. And so they had all of this amazing all of the, the these amazing stories that went along with the crystals and it just felt like a healing place. And I know a lot of people are really into their crystals. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's something that's with your jewelry. I mean, are those two separate businesses or do they merge? You know, the, are you doing like crystal healing? Um, tell me a little bit more about your jewelry business. Okay. Um, so Typically, when you walk into a crystal shop, you can go and look at, say, a bowl of rose quartz and on the tag it will say rose quartz is for enhancing love and compassion and empathy and bringing love into your life, right? In the way in which I work with gemstones, so I'm going to call them gemstones because they're faceted and they're high-quality gemstones that 
yes so my jewelry is handmade it's the heirloom pieces I wanted to bridge the gap between spiritual jewelry and high quality jewelry so that you have high quality but also high vibrational jewelry I didn't I found that I thought when after this came through I realized that actually there's a gap in the market I've always wanted like jewelry that's amazing that I could hand down to my children but you know, I had typically found spiritual jewellery that kind of had crystals but didn't really last very long. So anyway, let me go into what I was about to say with it. I'm, I'm going off on a, another rabbit hole. Sorry, Carla. Um, the, the gemstones that I work with are more like I'll, I'll pick up a gemstone and I'll let it speak to me. And I might have like five different stones of the same type but each one has a very different energy and a very different mission some gemstones don't want to be worked with some do and some want to be worked want to like give that person a particular thing so what happens with my my jewelry making process is before we even start looking at gemstones and take people through a process to connect very deeply with their soul and for them to understand who they are on that soul level, what their soul wants to experience and express through them. And yeah, what, what that next evolution is. We take that, that energy, that frequency, that feeling, and also they get a divine download in that session about, is it a ring? Is it a pendant? Is it a blue stone? Is it a pink stone? You know, is it yellow gold? Is it platinum? Is it, you know? And so then I take that, that feeling, those feelings, that vibration, and I go and intuitively choose gemstones that would I know could activate that in someone. And so then I bring my selection of intuitively chosen gemstones back to my customer. My customer knows exactly when we've found it. That's why I call it a soulmate stone. Like they just get a big smile on their face or they cry or they stop talking or they are like, oh, gosh. They, they say to me, I can feel this is doing something in my heart, Donna. Um, and then we go through a design process. Okay, what does this gemstone need um, from a functional perspective? And then what do you want it to look like from an aesthetic pers perspective? I want this to be the most beautiful thing you've ever laid eyes on. So how do we make that happen for you? Um, and then I have my jeweler make it. He's been making jewelry for over 30 years. And um, then I energetically achieve that whole piece of jewelry to activate that person's energy field switch on their light so when you place a ring one of when you place that ring on your finger or the pendant on your neck what happens is energy ripples up through your arm or through your chest and it does it, it turns your light on it sounds crazy and wild color but it's what happens <laughs> um and then you said ask me a question about like reading and things so then this is a very different approach that I have to um, what other people do. Again, this was a demand download. And this is the beauty of following your intuition that you can have a business that's very different from what is out there. It's, it can be very unique. Um, I saw as part of that vision, again, I was out in the stars and I was looking down and I saw lights like getting turned on. And then I saw rings getting created over the top of Melbourne. And I saw them going out to all different places all around the world, Carla. And as that happened, then I saw this energetic grid forming all around just above the surface of the earth. That energetic grid, so each piece of my jewellery acts as an anchor point into the earth and forms part of that. My business is called the House of Orion, the jewellery business. It forms um, part of the House of Orion crystalline energetic grid and every six months my customers come into calls with me and we do energetic activation work the purpose of this grid is to support the ascension of the planet and all of her inhabitants so we are energetically supporting that process of people's light switching on of downloading peace into earth of all the different things that want to want to come through in that space so there's this bigger mission I would really like to be able to create the world's largest crystal grid Carla that is my mission um with with my jewelry and 
my customers love that they love that this works on them on an individual level that it turns their lights on they love that they've got these special pieces of jewelry that they'll be able to hand down to their children they also love that they're part of a bigger picture I love how the jewelry seemed uh, seemed to kind of encapsulate everything we talked about you know that you use the intuition to um, by working with the client and the stones, you use your intuition to pick something that you know will help bring out their own radiance yes. and make them feel radiant yeah. so that you both feel fulfilled and content. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. You just summed that up beautifully. Thank you so <laughs> much, Carla. <laughs> just wrapped that up nicely. <laughs> now, one, one other question that I have is you've mentioned a couple of times you know, that you've, you've seen these lights switching on. Are you doing this through meditation? Are you dreaming about this daydreaming? You know, how are you getting these bits of intuition in your own life? When I saw, when I've had those visions, when I've been out in the stars, that's been through like a meditative, yeah, like a meditation, but in day-to-day life, I can see people's energy fields. So I'm clairvoyant and I can see people's lights. So when I say people's lights are switching on, I actually mean it literally because I can see it. I can see people, my clients, you know, when they have those shifts, I can see that their energy just boom becomes brighter or maybe more love flows into their field and I can see different colours and I can feel different things that are happening. So when I say people I switch people's lights on I I quite literally mean that Hmm. so do you see auras do you see people's auras yeah yeah I do and so with um with my house of Orion business I offer free energy readings to people so I read people's auras and tell you what colors I can see in your field and what that means for you um specifically what that means for you and then I try on um, gemstones energetically and tell you what I think would be a perfect match that would really, that would switch your light on, that would enhance your, your experience here on this planet. And so that's what I offer as a gift as part of my jewelry business. And so do you do that um, in person or, or is that something you can do on zoom? Wow. Um, Yeah. So you can see my aura right now. Yeah, I, I can, but also I, usually wait for an invitation unless something flashes up for me I usually wait for an invitation or for um, people to come into that energy reading space with me sometimes I just can't help it and I see stuff Um, but I kind of try and be respectful of like not looking into people's souls you know (laughs) Um, because that can feel really full on for some people for some people can really feel that so I try and be really respectful but yes um to answer your question yes oh, i cool. can see your energy even if so you've what does got, my aura like, look um, like i've always wondered um your aura looks pretty full so the way that like your colors appear and this is very different this is i've never said this to anyone else before but the colors in your field sort of look like they kind of look balloony like there's a roundness to them and so there's a, a fullness and it's sort of like I don't know if you feel like a bubbly person, but that's kind of how your colors come up is like in sort of bubbles and they're wanting to grow. And I also feel the edge of the balloons. I'm like a little bit, sometimes you can feel that you're pumping yourself up from the inside. Does that make sense? Like you are like, like increasing who you are from the inside out. Um, And sometimes the edge of those balloons might feel a bit restrictive for you. Like, I just want to, like, I just want to break open, like be like super expansive. And then also, you know, that this is sort of just the way that you work. Um, You have some bright colors in your energy field. You have some blue and yellow and green. You have quite a few different colors. You have some warmer colors too, like a peachy corally color, which is really cool. Some yellows. You've got quite a number of different colors we had more time I could like tell you what all of those mean um but the I can tell that you're a grounded person I could feel that anyway when you know we started talking so you've got some of your main colors like the blue the yellow the green and then you've got other warmer colors too um I love it when I see pale coral in people's energy fields because 
it just gets me so excited, Carla, because I know that when I see pale coral, there is that person is bringing through a new version of humanity, like wants to be creating something new in this world. Um, it's usually connected to the feminine. So, you know, maybe it's that your pod, I don't like, maybe it's that you want to like amplify female voices through your podcast as an example, but I would say that there's a much bigger picture here that's happening for you. Um, and it makes me very excited because people like you that have that sitting in their energy field, there is some mission and I can feel it wants to come through more for you as well. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. It, it is me, cool. I'm tingling. Yeah, I've always, I've always wondered it. what it was like to be able to see auras because I can't see people's auras. I actually don't take it lightly because when you're looking at someone's aura, you're seeing the the depth of them, the real, the real them. And so I hold that very sacred that, you know, people will allow me to look at their auras like that and see the true version of them. It's really beautiful. You get a sense of their personalities, a sense of what they've gone through as well, a sense of what might be sitting there as challenges, but also gifts in their energy field. Like it's, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, I love to leave people with a call to action, something valuable they can take with them so that if they want to make a change today, uh, they can do so whether or not they have the the money or resources to do so. This is what is coming through really strongly. My invitation is to drop down into your heart space, like let yourself move very slowly down from your head and down into the center of your chest. And let yourself feel what is present for you. Let yourself feel how your chest feels physically, but also what's present for you on an emotional level. And just be with that. Nothing to do, nothing to change. It's allowing. You might have different feelings that are present there, maybe even some feelings that feel like they're opposing each other, like opposites like peace and excitement or grief and joy. Your heart can hold so much. My invitation is for you to just stay in that space for a little bit. Keep dropping down into your heart. That sounds great. So yeah. when people want to work with you, how do they get a hold of you? You can contact me um, through my website. You can book free calls with me for my healing work um, or the free energy reading for my jewelry business. Um, and you can find me at donnawallace.com.au or Donna Wallace Healer on Instagram. Um, and then I have the House of Orion on Instagram and the House of Orion website as well. Hit up the donnawallace.com.au website. You'll find links to the House of Orion and everything else through there. Okay. And I'll have uh, links in the show notes for anybody that wants to go check it out. Amazing. Oh, it's been my absolute pleasure. 